my view of the American-Israeli relationship is that it's, um, to paraphrase and reverse James Bond, stirred but not shaken, which means it's unshakable. That is Israeli President Benjamin Netanyahu, and he is in the United States, believe it or not. But, of course, you wouldn't really know it. His visit has been completely overshadowed uh, by the situation in Ukraine, and it's barely getting a mention in the media. His visit comes at a time, as he says, when things are somewhat strained. He and Mr. Obama not really seeing eye to eye on a whole lot of issues. Uh, but Israel, of course, has a lot to lose when it comes to the situation with Ukraine and how Mr. Obama is handling it or mishandling it. And his mishandling of the situation certainly has caught the eye of the president. Let's bring in Steve McDonald. You're with the Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs. Good to have you here with us. Thanks for having me. Hard to believe his visit is going uh, so unreported because his visit to the United States is, is fairly significant. For sure. I mean, the timing is extraordinary. As, as you've been covering the situation in Ukraine, um, this coincides with, with uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu's visit to D.C., his meeting with President Obama, his speech at AIPAC. But you're right. A lot of this has gone under the, under the radar because of what's happening in Eastern Europe. Um, I, you know, I, I think it was a, a poignant statement on the part of, of Prime Minister Netanyahu that the relationship is stirred but not shaken. I think the relationship really does transcend the, the presidency and the, and the prime ministership. It really does extend into the not just the, the Congress and the Knesset, but also to the people in both countries. And I think it is a very strong and solid relationship for the long term. There is some frustration, I think, with the peace process, both from the Americans and, and uh, the Israelis' perspectives. But, uh, but I think that over the long term, that's a, a drop in the bucket. Well, you would think so. But I mean, they come from very different sides on this. Uh, President Obama is saying, you know, still pushing that as Israel will have to do all the compromising when it comes to this peace deal with Palestinian. And he's not really asking Palestinian, the Palestinians to come up with anything. Um, and Netanyahu told the president, right of return is, is not negotiable. For sure. I mean, uh, you know, to give a little bit of history here, it, since 2000, Israel has three times committed to peace and a Palestinian state. Concrete offers that were, that were brought forward to the Palestinian leadership, all of which were rejected without counteroffer. And so there is frustration from the Israeli perspective. And one of the key points of frustration is this idea in the Palestinian leadership that somehow millions of Palestinians are going to be, quote, returning, that is, moving to Israel to the so-called former homes of their grandparents and great-grandparents that were abandoned in the 1948 war. This is a fantasy, frankly, on the part of the Palestinian leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, telling their people this over and over again only makes peace less likely to occur. And until the Palestinians get beyond this, and they can get beyond this by recognizing the right of the Jewish people to a homeland in the region, mm -hmm. until they get beyond this, unfortunately, it's very difficult to see anything, anything positive coming out of, out of negotiations. Interestingly enough, uh, Mr. Harper announced yesterday, uh, and fairly significant, that the fair and equal acknowledgement of all refugee populations arising from the Arab-Israeli conflict requires the recognition of Jewish refugees. This is significant, and we are the second country, I think, outside of Israel, mm -hmm. to, to say this statement. You're absolutely right. Uh, the U.S. Congress recognized the plight of Jewish refugees after the 1948 war. Many people wouldn't be aware that after Israel was founded for about one to two decades, uh, hundreds of thousands of Jews fled Arab countries stretching from Morocco all the way to Iraq, about 850,000 in total. Mm -hmm. Some of them did end up in Canada. There's a large, uh, large community in Montreal of, of these refugees and their descendants, but hundreds of thousands of them ended up in Israel. Uh, at the same time, or prior to that, I should say, in 1948, about 700,000 Palestinians fled Israel for various reasons, primarily because it was a war zone between Israel and, and the surrounding Arab states that invaded Israel. And so one can only look at the situation and the plight of Palestinian refugees and a solution to the Palestinian refugee problem if you examine what happened to the Jewish refugees. And what happened to the Jewish refugees and why you don't hear about them is because they were, they were um, integrated into Israel. They all became citizens. Their, their children and grandchildren are full Israeli citizens and, mm -hmm. and are, are enjoying life in the Jewish homeland. Uh, our argument is that this is the formula for uh, the Palestinian refugee problem. These are, are people who deserve uh, resettlement who deserve a future, but they deserve that future inside a future Palestinian state, not inside uh, Israel proper, because that would mean the end of Israel uh, as the Jewish homeland. All right, so in practical terms, what does this mean? I mean, it will be written into the policy, but does it change anything, practically speaking? Well, practically, it does a few things. One is Canada is increasingly uh, a voice for peace uh, in the Middle East. Canada is increasingly a, a voice on the international stage for the sort of uh, compromises and values that we want to see reflected in the peace process. We've expressed this voice at various venues, whether at the UN or at the G7. And so Canada does have a, 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 
a perspective to share with the international community that's important. But on top of that, Canada is chair of the Refugee Working Group, which was mm -hmm. established over the Madrid peace, uh, peace process in the early 1990s. And so Canada is uniquely placed to play a role in dealing with the refugee problem. And, and I think that, uh, you know, and I hope a peace agreement is signed at some point that provides Israel with security and the Palestinians with autonomy. When that peace agreement is signed, there, there is going to be a lot of practical work that needs to be done mm -hmm. on refugees and other issues. And so Canada, Canada can play a big role in that area. Yeah, and no doubt Prime Minister Netanyahu is, is watching closely what's going on in the situation with Ukraine because he has so much to lose as a nation. And he has to be looking at a guy like President Obama saying, look, if you can't step it up and act strongly here, what's to say you're going to have our back? Because if Russia can go in and take a country like this, other rogue nations can go in and, and, and overstep their boundaries, too. And Israel, of course, is always, always under threat. For sure. In fairness, Israel has always operated on the premise that Israel and only Israel will be responsible sure. for its security. And so Israel does benefit tremendously from the United States. Israel is increasingly economically independent, is increasingly uh, you know, a prosperous country, an up-and-coming country. And on top of that, Israel has never outsourced its security needs to anyone yeah. else. And so, so I think Israel does look at the world with a, a skeptical lens. Uh, that's inevitable when you live in the Middle East, and Israel is watching events in Ukraine very closely. But at the end of the day, it's Israel Israelis who are going to protect this country. Yeah, well, we'll continue watching. Interesting. Thank you so much for joining us this Thanks morning. Thanks for having me. Steve McDonald joining us this morning. We'll continue following his visit and see what happens with Netanyahu next, what he says. We're going to take a quick break. Ryan Doyle, John Downs, join us to face off a number of issues today. Redford, Premier Redford, crying some tears over some expenses. She's going to pay them back. She's not going to pay them all back. We'll tell you what she's saying next.